Hi and welcome, my name is Tim. And in this video lesson, I'm gonna give you a basic overview of heat pumps and, and how they work and how they differ from a general air conditioner or heating system. Now some basics of a heat pump. It's basically reverse cycle air conditioning or refrigeration. Now what this means is in the air conditioning mode, it functions just like a regular air conditioner. Discharge gas coming out of the compressor is routed to the outdoor coil, which is operating as a condenser, where it desuperheats, condenses, or changes state, and subcools the refrigerant. That refrigerant is then sent through the liquid line to the indoor coil, which is operating as an evaporator. And it absorbs heat from the inside space, and of course it rejects it to the outside back in the outdoor unit. Now in heating mode, they add something called the four-way reversing valve, and we'll discuss that in just a minute. But this causes the discharge gas coming out of the compressor to be routed to the indoor coil. This causes the indoor coil to now function as the condenser and reject heat into the space where it's been absorbed outside. Now let's start by looking at a really basic air conditioning system. You know, we've got our indoor and outdoor coil, and in an air conditioning system, our outdoor coil is our condenser. The liquid refrigerant is then fed through a metering device to the indoor coil where it boils at a reduced temperature and absorbs heat from the inside space. That heat is then carried back through the system and rejected in the outdoor coil. Now, if you add a component called a reversing valve, and we're going to talk about this. The reversing valve has the ability to take that discharge gas coming out of the compressor and reroute it. In other words, it can send it to the indoor coil. So what would happen now is as the discharge gas comes out, it would go to the outdoor coil during cooling mode. But when we go to heating mode, that valve changes position and that discharge gas now gets routed to the indoor coil. So now our indoor coil is acting as our condenser and it's rejecting heat into the space and it's absorbing heat through the outdoor coil from the outdoor air. It's a common liquid line in these systems so it's just flowing in reverse direction in the liquid line in each case. Now the heart of the heat pump is the reversing valve. Now this is actually what's gonna determine whether or not the discharge gas gets sent to the indoor or outdoor coil. Now the thermostat also has an impact on this. There is an O terminal or sometimes a B terminal on the thermostat that controls the position of the reversing valve. Now the reversing valve has four connections. The lone port on the top is the discharge line. We refer to that as the permanent discharge port because that's always receiving discharge gas from the compressor. And the center port of the three at the bottom is the permanent suction port, meaning this is always receiving suction vapor from the compressor. However, the two outside ports will change functions and route the gas either to the indoor or outdoor coil, depending on whether we're calling for heating or cooling. So in the cooling mode, we can see here, if we take a look at the diagram, at point one, the discharge gas enters. That's our permanent discharge. That gas is being routed to port two, which is sending it to the outdoor coil where the heat is rejected and it condenses and, and of course that's air conditioning mode. But when it switches to the heating mode, if you look here on the right, we can see that that same discharge gas coming in at port one is now routed to port four, which causes it to go to the indoor coil so that we can reject that heat to the space and heat the actual space. Now, just another summary here, the reversing valve in cooling mode again takes the discharge gas through that permanent discharge port and sends it to the outdoor coil where it desuperheats, condenses, and subcools. And of course our suction gas comes in from the indoor coil and goes back to the compressor. Now the valve may be energized into cooling mode or it may be energized into heating mode. Uh, it's hard to say, it depends on uh, geographical locations in a lot of cases, but there are heat pumps out there where the four-way reversing valve fails to the heat mode. That tends to be more in the Northeast as well as other colder climates. Now in the warmer climates such as down south and other places, a lot of the valves in those heat pumps actually are de-energized or fail to the cooling mode. Uh, this means they have to energize the valve to get it to go to heating. Okay, so there are some differences there. Now, if we take a look at the heating mode, we can see that we now have suction gas coming from the outdoor coil into the valve port 
and back to the compressor and our discharge gas again going to the indoor coil where it can reject heat and heat the space. Now in the cooling mode, the obviously the indoor coil is absorbing heat and the outdoor coil is rejecting heat just like any other air conditioning system. We're going to use a fixed bore metering device system which you know is not very common anymore. Most systems are using either thermostatic expansion valves or even now electronic expansion valves. So this uses a movable piston which also acts as a check valve in the opposite direction because the liquid is going to flow in opposite directions depending on whether it's in heating or cooling mode. So what would happen is the liquid actually pushes the piston open and allows it to meter into the coil and when it's flowing the other way it bypasses the piston so there's no pressure drop there. So here we go. We're absorbing heat from the indoor air in the cooling mode, the suction vapors back to the compressor, the discharge gas being routed to the outdoor coil, rejecting that heat. And if you look at our liquid line in red here, we can see there's two pistons. And when the liquid is flowing in the direction it is right now, between the outdoor and indoor coil, or from the outdoor to indoor coil, the piston or metering portion is bypassed and the liquid flows around the outside of it. It kind of lifts it off its seat. That liquid is then fed to the indoor coil, and if you look here, the piston here, or meter and device here, actually is seated, and you're forcing the liquid through a small orifice in this piston, which lowers its pressure and causes it to boil within the indoor coil. Now, when we go to heating mode, again, it's the opposite. We're absorbing heat from that outside air. Yeah, there's always heat out there, and we're rejecting it into the indoor air. So now let's take a look at a piston system or fixed bore meter and device in the heating cycle. In this case, we're absorbing heat from the outdoor air. The discharge gas is being sent to the indoor coil. So our indoor coil, again, is acting as our condenser. And when our liquid comes out here, flowing from the indoor to outdoor coil, we can see the piston now with reverse flow is lifted off its seat and the liquid bypasses that piston. So there's no pressure drop. And it's then fed to the outdoor coil. And of course, that piston, just like in the previous uh, slide on air conditioning is now seated, forcing the liquid through the small orifice in the piston, causing it to lower its pressure and boil within the outdoor coil and absorb heat. Let's take a short break now and I'll see you back here for part two on our overview of heat pumps.